So this is the world population since 2001. Using a graphing utility, we're drawing a scatter diagram of that data since 2000. Okay, so first thing I did was I broke out my calculator. I went to stat, I went to edit, and I typed in that data. Since it was from the year 2000, 2001 became one, and so on. Once I've typed that, on, typed that in, I wanted to make sure that my plot one was on, but it should be because we turned it on the other day. Remember, if you're just graphing, you want plot one off. If you want to do data, you got to have plot one on. And we're going to zoom. How are we going to zoom this thing? Let's go zoom nine. Zoom nine, we're going to go to our statistical data. Doesn't look very exciting. It's just a bunch of dots. Doesn't do us a whole lot of good. Okay, but that's fine. Okay. Based on that, fun oh, we're creating a logistic model. Okay, so let's create a logistic model. Stat over to calculate and then scroll to letter B, which is logistic. I hit enter on that thing. I go down to store regression equation, alpha F4, store that thing as Y1, calculate it, boom, logistic model is that guy right there. Remember when we do a logistic model, it's not going to give you an R squared value. It's bending to the data. So the R squared doesn't really have, there's not an R squared here, not a uh, correlation uh, value. Question B was based off this function, what is the carrying capacity of the world? So as we look at that information right there, what is the carrying capacity of the world? 11. Yeah, the number on top, the C value, the number on top of the fraction is going to be the world carrying capacity. So 11.68 is the answer to that guy right there. So this is 11. 0.680 because again the carrying capacity would be the number that goes on top of the fraction on our logistic equation part e says use the function found in part b to predict the population of the world in 2015 okay so we're going to figure out the population in 2015 the best way to do that is go alpha f4 y1 what number do i put in parentheses 15, as long as you put your data from the year 2000, I can put 15 in there. Boom, 7.226. Hey Siri, what was the world population in 2015? As of 2015, the population of world was 7,359,000. 7.3. 7.3 in 2015. So we're already above that. Okay. Um, when would the world, and that was in 2015, when would the world population be 10 billion? What am I going to need to do here to figure out 10 billion? Y equals 10. We're going to graph Y equals 10. Okay. And then we got to be smart. Hit your window, bud. Okay. X max of 10.9. Do you think we're hitting 10 million or 10 billion people by the year 2011? When would you guess that we hit 10 billion people? If you don't know, then just put in a number. Let's say it was 2,100. We don't know. I'm just going to put in a number. But 10 is not big enough. I got to go bigger than that. Okay? My Y maximum, if I'm trying to figure out when I hit 10 billion people, what do you think my Y max should be? Something bigger than 10 probably because I want to see it. But yeah, at least 10. I'm going to go to 12. Okay, I know I'm not going to get to 12 because our carrying capacity was 11 point something. Okay, graph that thing. There's my graph. There's my line. That's 10 billion. Now we're going to go second. Calculate the intersect. Look to see where they cross. First curve, second curve, guess. 64.128. What, what does that mean? 2064. That's the year that the population is going to be 10 billion people. Questions with something there? When we talk about populations, logistic models make a lot of sense. If you want to do a, a population, because there's going to be a limiting factor as to what we're doing. Okay, go ahead. Break out uh, your own dry erase mark if you got one. Pull out your whiteboards. Let's do some review.
Lots of different things on tomorrow's quiz. There's some solving. The review I gave you, while good, there are some questions that may be a little more challenging than they need to be. Again, that quiz is is a good place to go as well. Okay, You should know what you're doing. Today, we're going to be able to be cleared up a little bit more by going through this on your board. Solve those two questions. Hold it up when you got them. On this second problem here, we're struggling a little bit. First one, we seem to be doing fine. Lots of just little silly things on the first one. Make sure you're setting it up correctly. We're going to rewrite both sides to be a base of 3. This is 3 squared times 3x. This is 3 cubed times x plus 2. This is 6x. Make sure you're distributing there to get 3x plus 6. Minus 3x. Minus 3x. 3x is 6. So x is 2. We are fine on that first one for the most part. Just little guys. Little mistakes. The second one. We've got an exponential is equal to an exponential. I know that we're a little bit rough on this one. Which one has the more complicated exponent? The 6. So the best way to attack this problem is do log base 6 of both sides. Because if I do that, this is going to cancel, leaving me with just x minus 1. On the left side, I can take this 2x and put it in front. To get me to there. Everybody go to this point. What is this? That is a number. So in my calculator, I'm going to take mm, alpha F2 log base 6 of 3, and I'm going to multiply that by 2. 1.226. That is what this number is when I multiply it by 2. So I'm not actually rounding it, but 1.226x. I'm leaving it in my calculator, but I'm just writing it down for you. I've got x's on both sides, so I want to get x's on the same side. So I'm going to subtract x, subtract x. You have 1.226x. You are taking one away. So what do I got now? 0.226x. So I'm taking minus 1. I get the 0.226x. And then I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide by whatever that number is. Divide by 0.226. So in my calculator, I'm taking negative 1 divided by 0.226. Boom. Enter. That is what I'm looking for. Negative 4.419. Questions on that one? Here we go, next one. Solve it. Here we go. As I'm solving this, it's a log problem. I've seen log written more than once. So what should I do first here when I have log base 2 written more than once? Condense it. Log base 2. X minus 4 divided by 4 is equal to 3. Then don't forget, how do I get rid of log base 2? 2 to a power. 2 to a power. 2 to a power. That's going to cancel. I get x minus 4 over 4 is equal to 8. 2 cubed is 8. Last period, I got a lot of 9s there. Just take your time. Don't do silly stuff. Okay. Then I'm going to get rid of my 4. Multiply by 4. Multiply by 4. x minus 4 is 32. Add 4. x is 36. Condensing and then solving. That was the theme of that one. Questions there? Sorry, I'm trying to delete this and failing. All right, there we go. Next one. Half-life of schwannium is 584 years. If you start with 20 grams, when will you have 2 grams? Go around there. Half-life of schwannium. So as soon as you see half-life, you're doing Y equals A, E, K, T. Two times. We're trying to figure out half-life the first time, so it doesn't matter what you started with, you're going to have half of it. My K is going to be, I'm figuring out my K, my time is 584. So I'm going to divide by 2. I'm going to get 0.5 equals E to the 584K. I take the natural log. 
I'm going to divide by 584, and that is my K value. So K is equal to negative 0.0011, something. Okay, it's this number right here. Okay, then once I find that, then I'm solving the rest of it. I'm going to start with 20 grams. I want to end with 2 grams. My K is this number right here, and I'm solving for T. Divide by 20, I get 0.1. I'm going to take the natural log, natural log. That's going to cancel. Natural log of 0.1 divided by this K value that I found right here. I get T is equal to 19, oh, no, 1904. 1940. Point zero zero six, something like that. Earlier, I had a student that rounded to four decimals on her K value, and she was off by 23 years. Okay, that's a lot of difference. So you cannot round. You got to leave it in your calculator. Otherwise, it's not going to get you what you want. Questions on Half-Life? All right. Let's do a game. We are expanding right as a sum or difference of logs, which means you're writing a lot of little logs with plus or minus signs in between them because that's what sum and difference means. Go. All right. So as we set this thing up, we're writing it as a sum and difference of logs. So you got to figure out how many parts are there. How many parts are on this one? Three. I got one. I got two. I've got three. So make sure you write log B three times. Log B, my first one is Z, my second one is X minus 2. Parentheses are really important. Otherwise, it's completely different, and Y minus 2. On this X minus 2, it's square rooted, so I could throw that as a 1 half power and put it in front. The Y minus 2, it's squared. I can write that as a 2 power and put that in front. The log base B of Z, is that positive or negative? Positive because it's in front. You don't have to do anything. The 1 half would be positive because it's on top and this y minus two would be negative because it's on bottom questions there next one solve it the, you guys are doing well you're not having any issues solving it but just make sure we can do it we add 10 add 10 so we get 30 3 times 5 to the 4x. We don't want to put that 3 in there. We want to get rid of that 3. So we divide by 3. I get 5 to the 4x is 10. To get rid of 5 to a power, What I'm doing log base 5 on both sides. So that's going to cancel. 4x is equal to log base 5 of 10. And then finally, I would divide by 4. So on tomorrow's test, the one thing that you do have to pay attention to is on a question like this. Okay, and I'm not making them the hardest ones in the world, but a question like this, I will ask you for both the exact and the approximate value. When I ask for the exact value, that means before you type it into your calculator, basically. Okay, so if I'm asking for the exact value, it is this guy right here. Log base 5 of 10 divided by 4. Basically just saying, hey, I want to see that. That way you didn't just graph it on your calculator and get me the decimal. Okay, then you would get your X value, you get 0.358, I believe, when you type that in but it's just a matter of showing the exact, that's the exact, that's the approximate. Questions there? Everybody seemed to fly through that one pretty well, which is great. Let's go to the next one. How many hours will it take a culture of bacteria to increase from 20 to 5,000 if the growth rate is 85%? Two formulas you need to have memorized for tomorrow. Y equals eight. The Y equals A EKT, which is the same thing as PERT. That's one formula you need to know. And then the A equals P one plus R over N and T, the financial formula. Which formula are we dealing with here if we're talking about population growth? Y equals A E K T, just like half life. I'm starting with 5,000. I'm sorry. I'm starting with 20. I'm trying to get to 5,000. E, I know what my K is. K is my growth rate. What am I plugging in for K? 0.85. Okay, it is a growth rate. So it is fine that it is a decimal, just like when we plug in 0.05. Okay, there's my setup. I'm going to divide by 20. 
divide by 20, and then take the natural log of that, and then divide it by 0.85. In the end, what we get our t to be? 6.496 would have been my number. Typing it into my calculator. Questions there? Ran out of time a little bit. Let's just look through these last few that we didn't get to. Okay, growth and decay. Here's an equation. You start off with 600 gummy bears. How long until you have half of them? All you would have to do is plug 300 in right there and then solve. Okay, that's not any different than the last one we did. Inverse. There are two steps to finding an inverse. What's the first step? Switch X and Y, solve for Y. Go back and look at those if you need them. Again, that quiz is that I gave you would be great. APY. So this one's a little bit funky. Remember APY. Okay. This is my formula. If I'm doing APY, if I'm finding out the annual amount, what would I plug in for P? Really nothing. What would the time be? One. It's really just this formula. And if you want it to be a percentage, remember we subtracted one. That is the APY formula. We don't care about principal. Time's going to be one. It's going to get you a one point decimal. Just make it, uh, just subtract one at the end. Be able to graph logarithms. Haven't done that in a couple days. They're not that tough. If you've forgotten, go back and look at it again. Be able to do those things. Okay. I'm here in the morning. If you got questions, come and see me. I will answer whatever I can.